Yeah, Juwan, uh, Juwan will be out tomorrow. And uh, he's, he, right now he's, he's day-to-day. -day. Yeah, but he will not play tomorrow. What sticks out to you uh, about Maryland, obviously, coming off an impressive win? Yeah, really, really good win, really good couple weeks for them. The Illinois win was really impressive on the road. Obviously, they're playing at an extremely high level right now. And uh, that's, a, that's a hard road game to win. And then, obviously, what they did to Iowa in the last game. I thought defensively they were they were really, really good. And that's uh, that's when you look at their numbers, they've done a phenomenal job on the defensive end of the floor. And, you know, Jameer Young is playing at an incredibly high level right now. They've got experience with uh, with Scott, with uh, uh, with Reese, and they've got they've got uh, good guard play. So, you know, it's a uh, it's a game we're gonna have to be firing on all cylinders. We're gonna have to get off to a good start. It's uh, very important in those early games to try to come out of the gate and set the set the tone and you know they're they're going to pressure they're going to uh, get out on us and we have to do a good job of handling that we have to take care of the basketball so you know when you talk about keys with this team take care of the ball get back in transition rebound with that one of the better shot blocking teams in the conference when it comes to just being smart at the rim how much of an emphasis is that yeah i mean yeah, we, we talk about that every game. You know, we're still taking too many of them. I think we were two for 11 on contested shots at the rim in our last game. And we've played some really good shot blockers in the last couple of weeks with uh, with Cliff. And uh, who did we play there tonight? Yeah, with, uh, with Hakpara, obviously a very good shot blocker. And same thing with Reese. And the guy that's a really good shot blocker on this team is Geronimo. And he's another guy that has a lot of experience at this level playing at Indiana. And we're going to have to be smart. The other thing they do, anytime you spin, they're, they're right there converging on the ball. So we have to play under control. And if we do that, hopefully we'll, we'll get some shots if we play smart. If not, they're going to capitalize. They're as good as any team in our league in the country of uh, capitalizing on turnovers. And you know, pick sixes are death against this team. So we really have to uh, take care of the basketball. We were much better the other night against Ohio State than we've been the previous two games. But that's going to be a huge. Uh, key to this game if we're going to have a chance to win. You've got, uh, got Jameer Young, and it feels like collectively you've done a good job at containing the other team's best perimeter score of the season, like Boo Booey, Tyson Walker. Do you, is there a common thread among those? What do you think you've been able to do there? Well, uh, you know, Jameer Young, right now, I saw the other day that he is the most clutch player in, um, in college basketball with the amount of shots that he's hit in. In, um, in two possession games with under five minutes to play. And he's doing that again this year. You just see the shots that he's making uh, against Iowa. He hit some incredible shots, hit the game winner on a really good drive to his left hand. It, you know, as far as Bowie, I mean, I, I thought our guys got off to a good start on him. And it was by committee. It's not just going to be one guy. Uh, we're going to have to do a really good job of going out there. And, and he's a team problem. He's not an individual problem. If he does uh, get into space, then he's a great passer and throws lobs to Reese. So you know he's we know he's going to get get some. He's going to hit tough shots. He can't get deflated when he hits those. You just have to do the best job you can at keeping him out of the paint. He's so good at finishing, especially with that left hand, and uh, he's knocking out his shots uh, at a pretty high clip, especially in crunch time. How close is Blaze to seeing some time on the floor? Oh, not very, not very. I mean, he's he's doing more and more every day, but he's still a ways away. We've talked a lot about CJ, but it seems like, especially over the last handful of games here, he's really elevated his game. How critical has he been just in the spark that he provides and then the lift that he gives you in so many ways? Yeah, CJ, you know, the thing I'm most proud of CJ and pleased with CJ is just his overall leadership. He's been so good every day, setting the tone of his voice, and he has really grown into that role where last year, Greasel, Bandamel, Walker, they did a lot of that for us. And we needed somebody to step up. And CJ has probably been our most consistent in regards to being uh, that, that leader, that vocal leader that we need to set the tone in practice and games. And I'm really, really proud of him for the progression he's made to get to the point he's at right now. And then obviously his play is speaking for itself right now. He's, he's just playing with so much confidence. And uh, it's been fun to see. Nobody puts more time in the gym than CJ. And it's always fun to see that hard work paying off. You talk about a team that talks well and especially on the road how key is that I think like the Iowa game you said that was a case where yeah, yeah we good yeah we weren't very good against Iowa in, in that regard and we were unbelievable against Kansas State and you know it's funny how it works out you, you, you get an unbelievable road win against a team in a hostile environment and then you get your you know you get your butt handed to you when you don't do those things you know you say little things but it's actually a huge thing so 
you know, our guys have been better since that game, but it's been in our home arena. And Ohio State, when we hit that adversity in the first half to get down nine, I thought our guys talked their way out of it. And, you know, the next thing you know, we got a eight or nine point lead at halftime. So, you know, we're certainly capable of doing it. We just got to be willing to do it. And it's got to be a full 40 minute commitment. It can't be for 30. We've done that on the road. We've played 30 minute games and it's not good enough. You got to play a complete 40 minute game if you want to walk away with a Big Ten road win. Back to CJ, how have you seen that confidence that he's had grow into what it is? Now? Yeah, it, it just, you, you can see it in, uh, in practice. He, uh, uh, you know, the guys are finding him. I think Rink is doing a really good job right now of, uh, of finding our perimeter guys. And, you know, that's one thing I've been really pleased with the offense overall this year is just how unselfish our guys have been. It was Rink's night the other night. Guys found him. CJ had his stretch. Our guys found him. Kase has had plenty of games where he's had the hot hand, and our guys have done a good job of screening and getting him open and, and finding him. But, uh, you know, when you got five guys on the floor that can make a play and make a shot, uh, that makes it pretty difficult to defend. And, you know, CJ's movement has been great. And he's just playing with no hesitation. And that's the thing I've really liked is he's not out there thinking. He's just out there playing and reacting. And, and you're certainly much better off, especially as a shooter, when you play with that kind of mentality. Where does that come from? Well, again, I've just seen the growth in CJ. And I think his overall demeanor and his talk and his leadership has helped him with his overall play on the court, his consistency. I mean, CJ has had some great moments for us in this program, uh, you know, the last half, two seasons ago, Big Ten play, he shot over 50%. And last year, he had some great uh, moments for us when our guys, uh, when we had the injuries. And then this year has been pretty consistent all year long. So, you know, I just think his overall demeanor, uh, the way he is approaching uh, his everyday life and his everyday practice is carrying over into the games. What has what has Eli done to earn the minutes he's gotten in this game? Yeah, Eli, he just continues to get better and he continues to grow. And you know, obviously, with Jawan off the floor right now, we need somebody to step up. And you know, it was Eli the other day. I thought he was a part of the runs that we made. That's why he got extended minutes. I think he got 15 minutes the other night. Maybe Matar one night. We may have to play a little bigger at times, just based on how things are going. This is going to be a very physical game against Maryland as well. So we may have to have. Uh, lineups out there with more size, but you know Eli, he's he's starting to understand it. He's getting more physical. His reads on offense, he's getting himself to the free throw line. Uh, I think he had nine of our first 15 at Iowa when we were struggling to put the ball in the hole. So you know, I've just I've been happy with Eli's progression and his development, and uh, he's got a he's got a really bright future. How have you seen uh, guys like Bryce and Sam react to the defensive assignments from these really good guards? guards yeah, I mean, uh, I think they're taking a lot of pride in it. We've, we've moved Bryce to the ball the last couple games uh, with Maryland's size. We're going to have to uh, rotate him around a little bit, but he's, he's done a really nice job. He got the assignment to start on Bowie, and I thought he was really good. And then Sam had a lot of reps on him. I thought Sam, he's very diligent in his scouting uh, report, this, uh, his scout discipline, you know, understanding the tendencies. And then Jamarcus certainly has had some time on those guys as well. So again, you're not going to have one guy go out and shut down a Boo Booey or Jameer Young, but you know our guys have done a good job of you know trying to keep a fresh body on them and doing everything you can to slow them down, knowing that they're still going to go out and get their baskets, but not getting deflated when that happens. When it comes to road games, how do you emphasize the importance of carrying everything over on the road while also not making it too big of a deal? It becomes like a, a mental thing. You know? Yeah, it, it's all about it's all about it's all about consistency, Robin. I would say that is the biggest thing when you're going on the road is you can't have the lulls. You can't have a stretch where you can't don't take care of the ball. We did that against Northwestern at home. We were able to survive it because I think the crowd, you have 15,000 behind you. You don't have that. And then the crowd gets into it. Rutgers, for example, was a perfect example of when we went through our lulls and their crowd really got into the game. And you know we obviously struggled all the way through those last nine minutes. Uh, Minnesota, same thing. You know Once they got going downhill, they were tough to shut off. So it's just got to be a consistent effort. We did it at K-State. So we've shown that we're capable of doing that, knocking off a top team. Uh, but we had great consistency in that game, especially on the defensive end. Thanks, guys. Thank you.